Look, I feel like people forget how nice Crawdon is. Buddy is rarely used, and stat-wise it doesn't look super enticing other than its base 120 attack. But the true sauce comes with its ability, Adaptability. With this, its stab moves are actually boosted by two times, and we can pair that with the option to run Dragon Dance, or even things like Swords Dance to set up. It bypasses its slow speed by running priority Aqua Jets, which after some boosting, nothing wants to live. Thanks to its water and dark typing, knockoff also does insane damage, and anything left has to deal with the big ol' meaty crab hammer. Crawdon is a massive threat when properly set up, and we're gonna get this bad boy going. Alright, look, here's the thing. Crawdon with a little swords dance action, maybe a side of butter, and now we are absolutely talking. Today it is time to show Mr. Cross some love, and honestly, this is a mon that always seems to pull its weight, it doesn't get as much respect as it should, and that's what we're all about over here. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I promise you will not regret it, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. My opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Crocodile. Now, it's a little bit of interesting intel, just most of the time, Crocodile is going to be working with a Scarf with that Moxie ability, and if it's a lead, it might be potential for Stealth Rock, and it actually is going to be Intimidate. So it's more than likely not going to be Scarf, and that means that the Rocky good boy should be faster here. So that does allow me to set up the Stealth Rock. I kind of imagine they're going to set up the Rocks of their own, but worst case scenario, I can just hit him with a close combat, and then try to do my shenanigans. So it actually turns out they're going to go for the knockoff. Now, that does get rid of my Sash, knocks me to 23, and I'm like, you know what, that's, yeah, I'm going to go for the Endeavor here. That might as well be one, because now... As I outspeed, that brings it right down to that exact level, and they do finish me off with the second knockoff. But I'm fine with that because, again, uh, close combat after being intimidated wasn't going to do as much. The Lycan Rock is mostly built to be able to live with a Focus Sash, you know, Endeavor, and then just priority Accelerock that last HP. But I'll take it because that actually puts me in a position where now I can bring in the big meaty claws. And Crawdon's in a position here where I'm pretty free to go for a Swords Dance, just because I do feel like either they're going to switch out expecting the priority Aqua Jet or just set up that Stealth Rock like that. So we get ourselves a nice little free turn to now double our attack and honestly this thing is wild already. We have the Life Orb, I've got my attack doubled and Adaptability Aqua Jets do a ton. So with that priority I can just go ahead and finish off the Crocodile and see his ass in a while. So that takes care of that and we're honestly sitting pretty good with the Crawdon here. I take some Life Orb chip but we're exactly where we're looking to be. And they decide to go into the Vile Plume. So most of the time, these are going to be physically defensive. And this poor little unsuspecting smelly flower boy is just standing over there smiling. However, a knockoff at plus two, it does not matter how defensive Vile Plume is going to be. That just straight up knocks his ass into the Shadow Realm. And I also I do get hit by a little bit of Rocky Helm. It kind of hurts the claws a little bit. But we do end it ends up on the ground and that thing dead. So we're fine with it. So... I do take both the Life Orb and the Rocky Helmet, but figuring out Vileplume being a good answer normally after a Swords Dance, not going to quite be. So, this now allows them to go into the Alolan Ninetales. So, it's kind of interesting. They have a team with kind of some dual weather shenanigans. They obviously have this for Aurora Veil. They also have some Sun in the back. And I'm feeling like, you know what, even though this thing has a 50% defensive boost here, if I just go for that Terra Water just to kind of marginally boost up my Aqua Jet a little bit, I should be able to grab a kill here. And the way that Terra functions with adaptability is a little bit goofy, but it still does just result in just a bit more damage. So we coming out here and uh, just going to absolutely jet this boy with our ridiculous fountain on our heads. And that takes care of the Nine Tails, which is great because now we don't have to deal with you know, Aurora Veil. And that feels pretty good. So that's a direct showcase of, you know, Crawdon not being super quick. You can go the Dragon Dance option to be fast. But it turns out you don't need any speed when you're just working with Aqua Jet anyway. So now they decide to bring in the Torkoal, who is going to immediately melt the snow. And now instead we're working with some Drought. So Drought is unfortunate for Crawdon, obviously just because it's going to weaken my water moves. However, if you did in fact think that uh, Crawdon cares, he does not. I have a friggin' knuckle sandwich full of water with a crab hammer, and that is going to knock out the Torkoal. I don't believe the crit mattered. Plus two adaptability with Terra, Life Orb, it, it, nothing. I don't care how damn sunny it is out here, it, these, these claws are not drying up. So, that takes care of the Torkoal, and now we have to deal with the sun. So, as this is going to allow them a position to bring in the obviously damn scariest thing ever, it is going to now get that Protosynthesis boost and does boost its speed. So, good news is, it doesn't matter how fast this thing is, it does not have priority, so I can go for the Aqua Jet. And uh, with that Fountain on my head, it's going to do a lot of damage, but sadly, 
not quite going to be able to take care of it. So I do take some life orb. Now this thing's in a position where Moonblast just definitely sends me to the nearest crawfish boil. And while we do go down, the damage is done. Crawdon has absolutely opened the team up here to where now we got to try to pick up some pieces. So their final mod in the back, other than this flutter, is going to be a Backscalibur. So this actually is a great spot to bring in the physical Clefable. The chewed piece of gum is in fact choice banded and we're in a spot where I know that I can take a moon blast from this thing and a play rough is going to knock out if they want to switch. If they stay in this thing goes down and they decide to just dip out and buddy has been officially body bagged by the crawdont. Sometimes you just get you get crawd by the boy and that is going to bring us into game number two because this team is pretty fun and honestly crawdont is such a massive threat that we're going to we're going to continue with the guy. So this time we have another very interesting looking team with basically some massive threats and with that let's jump into it. So this time they're actually going to end up tossing out the Backscalibur. I kind of expected a Palafin lead. I'm of course just going to toss out the dedicated lead Lycanroc boy. So this could be a bad lead for me in a couple different ways. I'm kind of thinking maybe they Dragon Dance and part of me wants to switch into more Pico to get the Mirror Herb shenanigans. But instead I just decided to go for that Stealth Rock. I feel like it's going to be useful here. And it turns out they're actually going to go for the Earthquake. So I'm totally fine with that. If it was a loaded dice set, um, it would obviously not allow my Focus Ash to work. And then I can't do what I need to do. But at this point, at 1 HP, as much as I want to go for an Endeavor, it's more than likely this thing has the priority in the Ice Shard. And in order to combat that and get some value, I decided to just go for the Accelerock Rock instead. Which is going to get it to half anyway, which is really good value regardless. And I do go for the Ice Shard anyway. So I do, obviously, getting up my Stealth Rock is nice. I now make the Backscalibur a whole lot more manageable. And now I can switch into whatever I like. So, as I'm looking at it, I don't have a lot that wants to deal with this. Obviously, I could go to Clefable, but I'm worried about an early Terra. So I decide to go into more Pico. A little adorable ass painted on tail boy is out here. And I decide, hold on a second. I don't know if a knockoff actually kills here. And that... <laughs> Could be bad if it doesn't, but I'm, I've made it this far, so we're letting the little hamster go for it. And it, in fact, does not kill it. As uh, They did have the loaded dice, which is nice. However, this allows them to just finish me off with an earthquake. And more Pico just came in and disappointed and is now dead. So, super nice. I was kind of thinking maybe, hold on, they might dragon dance or something, but... Yeah, no, instead, I am just a dead-ass hamster. So, with that, it is crawfish boiling time. And this is the type of crawfish that boils you. So, I go into the crawdont mostly just because, at this point, a sword dance kind of feels free. A lot of people are going to expect that aqua jet uh, and switch out. But they actually stay in. They go for the earthquake, which shows they probably don't have, um, I guess, a dragon move. They've got to be working with scale shot. But, uh, anyway, I can now get that Swords Dance after living, and then I can just fire off an Aqua Jet, which does finish off the Backscalibur, and we've got this thing exactly, you know, where we want it. A lot of the time, Crawdon isn't going to be in a spot where we can, you know, fully sweep a squad. However, setting up an early Swords Dance, they're going to have to, like, something's going to take some carnage, and we just get to try to poke some holes and stuff. So, they now decide to go into the Garganackle, and as I'm looking at this fella, I'm thinking... A little bit of salt on the crawfish might not be too bad, but also, as of course I do have the coverage with the crab hammer, a knockoff, I expect maybe a potential terror, but then I'm like, a knockoff actually just kills anyway at plus two, even if this thing is max defense, which is absolutely insane. And while that does take care of it, I do take some rocky helmet and some life orb, and we're just barely hanging on by a damn little, little crabby threat over here. So. This is now going to bring in the Tinkaton, and as I'm looking at this thing slinging hammer at me, I'm feeling like I really just kind of am forced to go for an Aqua Jet at this point. It's going to be able to outspeed me, and I can get as much damage as possible, depending on what you know, kind of set this thing is working with. A lot of the time, there's going to be like more speed and kind of less physical defense, if anything, more on the special side. So I go for the Aqua Jet, and that does take care of Homegirl. She's just out here flexing the hammer, and now going to be flexing it in the Shadow Realm. So. I was fully prepared for Crawdont to go down like a captain of his ship here and have the life orb knock me out. However, I actually lived it on 1 HP, which is the most hilarious thing ever because their team has almost no answer for a priority Aqua Jet. And at this point, they decide to go into the Rotom Heat and I can absolutely just jet the hell out of that guy too. So that takes care of the Rotom and finally Crawdont is going to go down uh, to that own, that own life orb, which it feels like some style points. And so we're going to take it. Now, Mr. Craw goes down. But at this point, they do still have some scary threats left, and I'm also down to three here. So 
On the empty battlefield, neither of us know what we're going to go into, but I kind of expect that they're going to go Palafin here because this thing does still need, you know, to switch out and back in to become a freaking superhero. So expecting Palafin, their other Pokemon being Dragapult, I feel like Clefable is a perfect example here to switch into because not only can I take any attack from like a base level Palafin, I can cover for a Dragapult switch in it. So I just play rough the shit out of him. And uh, it is actually going to be able to live it because, you know, Clefable is not supposed to be a physical attacker, but it's way more fun that way. And so, as I go for a second one here, they do want to try to bring the Dolphin back uh, in superhero form. So, they decide to go into uh, the Dragapult, which is perfect. Absolute, looking like a snack for our thick-ass Clefable over here. And that actually does finish it off with the play rough. They might have expected to try to live that or something. Uh, but listen, Banded Clefable demands respect absolutely new meta out here so obviously final mon is going to be the palafin who does come in and just barely live the stealth rock damage which is kind of unfortunate but the main reason why we mess with the clefable like this is because he is thick as hell and we should be able to take any attack this thing wants to throw at me you know barring a potential like choice band and then something crazy so they do actually go for the latest possible game terra gonna go for that terra water just to get an extra stab they clicked Ice Punch the turn prior. Don't know if they're expecting me to switch into something like the High Dragon. Uh, but this time they can just go for that Jet Punch. It's probably going to be something like their best damage. But again, look at the roundness. We are rotund out here. We're able to live. Not only that, but actually also land a Play Rough. So I'm pretty much due for Play Roughs to miss for the rest of my life now because I just hit two. But that takes care of the Super Dolphin. And that's going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was kind of just a ridiculous one. Crawdon absolutely made it easy for us. And uh, that is going to bring us into game number three because we are now leaving. So I do want to say, if you enjoy the videos, I really do appreciate it if you could hit that like button. If you've made it this far, you might as well. It helps out the channel and YouTube just likes it when that happens. And so I got to be a cringe YouTuber and ask for it. But we have a very interesting team on the other side. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into it here. So it turns out we're dealing with the crazy Cleopatra Ostrich. And I am immediately like, damn, I kind of forgot this thing existed. And I know this little crazy turkey's got some shenanigans. So I just decided to go for the Stealth Rock. That's what I'm here to do. And I know with that Focus Sash, I'm going to be able to get some stuff going with Lycan Rock. So they actually end up going for the Protect turn one, which is nice because these things are a lot of the time pretty predictable. And that's because hey, with Protect sets, they're going to be working with a Speed Boost and then potential to set up with things like Calm Mind. And not only be able to have very strong stored powers, but also potential to, you know, like Baton Pass, which is... Cringe. So, I go for the Endeavor here. I'm, I'm like, you know, maybe they go for the attack. There's no reason for me not to click Endeavor there because if they do attack and I don't go for it, I'm kind of screwed. So, at this point, I'm just going to continue to click Endeavor, which I feel like kind of gives away the fact that I'm Focus Sash, but we're going to see how it plays out. So, they do go for the Calm Mind as I'm just going to Endeavor the air. And again, I have no reason not to just basically continue to click Endeavors here because sooner or later, something's going to have to attack me. And as long as it's not going to be a multi-hit move or any crazy nonsense it should be in a pretty good spot so they do go for the baton pass and now they can just go ahead and pass all of those stat boosts into whatever they like so they do bring in the empoleon and short king is looking short over there and i go for that endeavor and obviously it's not going to work out so as i'm looking at it here i'm like you know what guess what i'm going to do here i'm going to make a pretty miraculous play and i'm going to click endeavor again so they actually <laughs> end up busting out the terra they're feeling like empoleon is on the top of the damn world here and they're going to go for that Terra Water. Just, I assume, I mean, after some Calm Minds, this thing is going to be doing a lot to anything. But now, you know, with that uh, Terra Water boost, it's going to be doing even more. But what it will not do is bust through a Focus Sash. These babies are made out of freaking Valerian Steel. And I do live on 1 HP, which now allows me to, you guessed it, go for that Endeavor, which does now uh, bring it down to 1. So Lycanroc is in a spot where it does exactly what it needs to do. And obviously I can pick this thing off with an Accelerock. And as that happens, they're probably like, well, shit, I know exactly what this thing's working with. So as they predict my Accelerock, they're actually going to end up bringing in uh, the Lycanroc of their own. So it's like the freaking Spider-Man meme. We're pointing at each other. I'm like, brother, what, what's going on? I, I do, in fact, have to kill you, though, which is unfortunate. And I do get some really good damage there. I actually end up rolling for the speed tie on both of our Accelerocks. And as I do win the speed tie, I actually knock him just down to 1 HP. So... I mean, he's got a, a bunch of dogs just living on their damn last breaths out here. And as I do go down, that's actually, I'm kind of fine with it. Because now, again, Crawdot likes to come in on stuff that looks like they're just barely hanging in there. Because now, I, I can just go for a Swords Dance. And I know that Accelerock is going to do a decent you know, little chunk of damage. But 
I, as soon as Crawdon starts getting some swords dances, it's like this thing is gonna it's gonna be a problem. So as I do get that nice little SD up, they can actually accelerate rock for the second time. Luckily, you know, I do live, and it's gonna put me on a little bit of a timer for that life orb. But that does take care of the Rocky good boy. And once again, Crawdon has found himself in a position to make a pretty solid difference, even with uh, just a few hits left in me. If I'm going Swords Dance, to be fair, Life Orb a lot of the time could be overkill, but sometimes it does make the difference and we're just here to get as much priority damage as possible most of the time. So as they go into the Milotic, this thing's like, hey, I'm a bulky water type, I can deal with this. And then Crawdon just tells his ass to knock it off. And that just straight up takes care of the guy, which now allows them to switch back into Empoleon, who, is in fact on 1 HP, and then he just dies. So, kind of just like a funny dramatic entrance, and now he's dead. So, Stealth Rock coming in clutch there. And just like that, Crawdon's like, does anybody want to throw claws with you, boy? For real. So, this now, I have one hit left in me, which uh, I really should not be working with Life Orb. But again, sometimes it's the difference in an Aqua Jet killing stuff, so... We like it. We're here for a good time, not a long time. And as they go into the Appleton, I'm gonna knock his apple pie ass right off the windowsill. And if I don't get to enjoy the delicious apple pie, nobody does. So that takes care of the Appleton and the crawfish. So we are just out here knocking ourselves out today, but this is gonna now allow us switch into whatever we like. And at this point, the damage feels like it's pretty much been done. Now they do have the Espathra left, but this is why I feel like Morpico is actually a really good switch in here. Obviously this thing probably could have the coverage with like a Dazzling Gleam, but I am gonna be faster if it's a modest nature, which most of the time, a speed boost set will be, and as I go for the knockoff, they actually do not protect and end up paying the little hamster price because that actually just knocks this thing out. And down goes the Espathra, and then immediately we go into Hangry Mode because it's been at least one turn since we've had a bite of food, so I mean, it's the only logical thing to do. And the final Pokemon is gonna be the Charizard. So the good thing about Zard is he comes in and is four times weak ass, it does in fact get knocked down to half from the Stealth Rock, and it is going to be in a spot where an Aura Wheel should kill this thing, and we're actually faster because more Pico got them little hamster legs going crazy. We've been running on the wheel, practicing for this shit, and that does take care of the Charizard and effectively the game. So once again, the Crawfish putting people in body bags, and we even get a we get to finish the game happy there on more Pico, which is fun. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a fun time messing around with this squad. I've got plenty of more shenanigans planned for videos soon. And uh, again, you guys are the greatest. I will catch you next time. Peace out.